Desk. Hi all, section 9.4 coming up here. We're going to be talking about compositions of isometries, which is kind of a fancy word for basically what we've been doing, okay? Uh, we'll define an isometry, which includes, of course, exactly what we've been doing, reflections, rotations, and translations. There's a fourth kind of isometry, glide reflections, which we'll talk about later, and we'll classify them, and we will learn some cool things about them. So let's get into it. First of all, an isometry is a transformation that preserves distance or length. Okay, again, translations, reflections, rotations, they're all isometries, and there is a fourth kind called a glide reflection. And here are pictures of each of them. We already have been through translations, we know how that works, reflections, rotations, and then a glide reflection is a combination of a transform, uh, tran uh, translation followed by a reflection over a line that's parallel to the uh, direction of the translation. And we'll again show you that a little bit later. Four kinds of isometries. Okay, three key ideas to get us going. A composition of isometries means more than one performed one after the other, okay? So that's what we're working with today. Now, theorem 9-1, next second, uh, second key idea. The composition of two or more isometries is itself an isometry. So if we put them together, again, lengths and angles are all preserved. So any number that we manage to put together, we still end up with the same exact shape started with, uh, with, you know, of course, different location, different orientation, uh, reflected, rotated, whatever it might be. But it, there's still an isometry because it's still the same size and shape. Finally, this one's the cool one. All isometries you can actually make as a composition of reflections. All right, we'll show you what that means here coming up right now. Okay, so theorem 9.2 tells us that a composition of reflections across two parallel lines is a translation. Key idea here, okay? If we reflect an, uh, an object over two parallel lines, one after the other, we're gonna end up with the original pre-image being uh, translated into the uh, into the third image. I'll show you that, okay? Here we've got line M right here, line N, and those guys are parallel, okay? Now, we're going to reflect ABC, first of all, over line M, and we're going to get A prime, B prime, C prime. We're going to do a second reflection then over N to get A double prime, B double prime, C double prime. All right, we'll, uh, uh, you know, obviously you can look at the pictures. The first reflection over M, well, the red figure is reflected into the purple figure. Then the second reflection over line N, the purple figure is reflected into the blue figure. Notice that we have a perfect translation now from the red to the blue. Okay, so that's how it works. Here's how we write our rules. Now, this is going to look a little bit weird because we actually did the reflection over M first, but here it's listed second in both of our rules, okay? The way we read this is we're going to do a reflection over N on the reflection of M of triangle ABC, or reflection over M. So we're going to do this function after we've done this one. So we'll do the reflection of uh, over N on the reflection of M of triangle ABC. Same thing down here. So even though we do this step first, we list it second, okay? So that's how it's written. This is a composition of reflections, the reflection of N after the reflection of M over M. I'm saying that wrong. All right. Now, I'm going to explain this and hopefully I uh, not, well, I'm going to go fast, so if you need to slow down and stop and, and, and do that, uh, please do. But remember how uh, a line of reflection, like M here, we're going to talk about this reflection here, the first reflection over line M. Remember how that line, the green line, has to be the perpendicular bisector of the line that connects a point in the pre-image to the point in the image? So in other words, I think we talked before, if we take line A, A prime, well, if we're doing a, a reflection, then line M is the perpendicular bisector of A, A prime. 
Same with B, B prime, C, C prime, that this line is the perpendicular bisector of all of those. Okay? Now, the second reflection holds true as well. Okay, line N is the perpendicular bisector of A prime A, right? The distance from here to here has to be exactly the same as the distance from here to here. Good? All right, so we can follow our math along here. What that means is that segment AG right here is congruent to GA prime. Also, segment AH here, A prime H, is congruent to HA double prime here, right? Right, so we see all that. Now, we can do a little bit of math here if we substitute uh, this in for AG uh, in, in this formula here. Basically, what I'm saying here that I forgot to point out is that a, a double prime, the line from here to here, is made up of all four of those segments we just talked about, right? And they're all congruent in this manner here. Now, if we substitute these values into this equation here, we end up finding this thing right here, which we can simplify to this thing right here, which we simplify a couple more times. And basically what it boils down to, you guys, is that the distance from A to A double prime is exactly twice the distance between the two parallel lines, okay? So you don't really need to memorize why this is done. I just thought that's kind of cool to show you. But what you do need to know is that the distance between any points um, will be exactly, between the point on the pre-image and the final image, will be exactly twice as long as the length of the segment between the two lines we reflected it over. Okay? Okay. Next idea. Theorem 9.3 says that a composition of two reflections over two intersecting lines. So now I've got line M and line N, but they cross in the middle, okay? A composition of reflections across two intersection and intersecting lines makes a rotation, okay? So you can see how the red figure is, is reflected to the purple one across line N, and then the purple one is reflected across line M to make the blue one. And you can also see how we have now made this figure into a rotation around point O. O is our center of rotation. All of those uh, uh, angles are maintained and that's uh, basically the result of two reflections over inter <laughs> excuse me over intersecting lines. Okay, let me show you something cool about this. Well, first of all, let me show you how we write this the same way. This time I switch the lines around. We're going to do the reflection over line M second. So we read this, the reflection of, over M on the reflection of N of triangle ABC, okay? Or we can write it that way. Okay, so now I'm not gonna go through this. You can read along with it if you want, but we're gonna prove it kind of the same way we proved the thing about distances, that the distance between the two, uh, um, the pre-image and the final image was twice the length of the distance between the parallel lines. Well, you can read along if you wanna know, okay? Follow along, follow along. But basically what it comes down to is that we find out that the angle of reflection between the original point and the final point comes out to be exactly twice the angle between the two parallel lines. Okay, so if this is 70 degrees, I know that this angle of reflection is 140 degrees with the center of reflection being point O. So just kind of cool stuff. I hope you're interested enough to follow along with what I didn't say there, but uh, not essential. But it is essential that you know that the angle of reflection formed by, uh, sorry, the angle of rotation formed by two reflections over intersecting lines would be twice the value of the angle between the two, uh, the two intersecting lines. All right. 
now, finally. A glide reflection, our fourth different kind of uh, uh, isometry. Again, we're going to take uh, our original figure, we're going to translate it in a certain direction, and then we're going to do a reflection over a line. And now notice that our line of reflection has to be parallel to the direction of the motion. Okay? So that's a glide reflection. And we're going to leave this up to you. What is this transformation going to look like? Okay? So, I'll uh, actually got the answer on the next slide, but let's explain real quick. We're going to do a reflection across the line x equals zero, which of course is this line right here, is the y-axis. We're going to do a reflection over that line after we've done a translation of zero, negative nine on triangle PQR. Okay, so let's do our translation first. Let me pick a color other than purple, green. Okay. So we're going to do the translation first. This means left and right zero. That means down nine. So we're going to go down nine with every point uh, over zero. So I go from one to negative eight to get Q prime. And I go from three to negative six to get P prime. And I go from seven to negative two to get R prime. Okay, connect the dots, coming up right here, lines, make them green. Okay, so my reflected point, or my, my, my I'm sorry, translated figure is right there following the first, uh, the first isometry, this part right here, okay? Then, after that, we're going to do the second part, the reflection across the y-axis. So now I'm going to choose red. And just like we were doing the other day, we are going to take these points and reflect them across the y-axis. Okay, so if I take r prime, that's five units over. Therefore, I must go to the positive five to make r double prime. Okay, from p, I go from negative four to positive four for p double prime. And for Q, I go from negative 7 to positive 7, Q double prime. There's our glide reflection, guys. I'll clear up the actually no. I'm just going to go on to the next page because now you see them. Of course, I flipped the colors around. But originally, we went uh, in this figure, we went from, from the uh, red figure to the orange figure to the blue figure for our transformation. That glide reflection that's listed right there. All right. So... Uh, have fun. I will see you later.